Welcome back. Well, today we're talking or we're going to dig deeper into the uh, memorial date. This has been a big um, subject or an issue <laughs> for a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses and ex-Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, some have written letters or some have called into the branch and asked why the memorial this year is not on Nizan 14. And the branch said, just write us a letter. So they're not telling anybody. So we've been digging into this. We talked about it on our last live. Some of the things that came up was Purim, the date of Purim. Purim was the date of Lent. Lent was the last day of Lent, the 40 days Jesus wandered through the wilderness. And uh, there was some speculation, maybe it's that date. We looked at the eclipse on March 24th. Uh, there's an eclipse taking place. We thought, could it be that lunar event they picked? Well, let's look into this. Uh, let's see why they are picking these dates. Uh, well, here it is, the Memorial of Jesus' Death. This is from their website. What can it mean to you? Here's the date, March 24th. And uh, they don't talk about much at all here, just the typical stuff, the resurrection how long's the program? Where it'll be held? It's free to attend. Will collections be taken? Just so you know, yes, they are taken because there's boxes at the end of the, in every hall, and uh, they get a lot of collections actually because I was one of the attendants at a few memorials, and it's an evening that a lot of people come in from out of town. A lot of people only go to the memorial once a year. That's their only meeting they attend. For some uh, fringe Jehovah's Witnesses, family members that you know, maybe believed a little bit more at one time, don't believe as much now. Maybe they go to the memorial in the special talk, maybe even the district assembly. So this is what happens in the organization. This is how they count their numbers. They get their numbers really up there this time of the year. Now you notice they, they nailed down the different dates for the memorial. Well, this year it's on the 24th. It doesn't match up to Nizan 14. Now, for most of you that have been in Nizan 14 is the day. Here's a little article they publish. Why did Jehovah's Witnesses ob observe the Lord's Supper differently from the way, let's say, the Catholics do or the Protestants or some of the other religions, even the Jews? Well, the Jews don't observe Jesus' death, okay? It, but they do observe a Passover. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. Now, why did Jehovah's Witnesses observe it differently? Well, they just want to be different about everything. That's the way it was. Are they changing? Well, we'll look at that. Well, here, here's the date they chose. Although Nizen 14 was Friday, the anniversary of that date might fall on a different day of each week or each year. And we determined the date Nizen 14 using the same method as we used in the time of Jesus rather than applying the method used. So Nizan 14 always has been the date. Uh, they, they call it a pattern introduced and established by Jesus. That's, that's what they're saying. Now, <clears throat> my question is maybe they've been reading it wrong all these years. Remember folks, this is the year that Jehovah's Witnesses are making all of these changes. And they've been doing things wrong. They, they said there's nothing in the scriptures that prohibits beards. No reason to count time. Um, we don't know about uh, who's going to get resurrected. There will be a resurrecting from uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and the flood and all of those uh, 25 million people that Jehovah killed because Jesus wasn't happy with just having them all killed. He wants them all brought back. You see, Jesus couldn't kill those people, He's but he can bring them back to life. Fix it, right? That's why he died that's what this is all about. It's actually a very, it's the most important event in the Bible. This is where Jesus died for us all, died to correct all this. And uh, yeah, Nisan 14 is the day of the memorial. Why did they do it on that day? I don't know. They uh, claim that it was the day Jesus died on, perhaps. Or they, they claim that it's the day the Lord's Supper was took place. And the Last Supper and the Memorial of Jesus' Death. So they kind of swing it into two. 
the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, and the Memorial of Jesus' death. Well, Nisan 14 is the actual day Jesus died, but is it the day that he sat down with his disciples and they partook? No, they're two different days. They're different days. We're going to look at that. Now, I was always led to believe that it, Nisan 14 was more accurate, but I think it was more about them being different. And they wanted to do something a little different, and they, they word it carefully. They call it the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, and the Memorial of Jesus' death. But they led us to believe that this was the day that Jesus celebrated this, on this specific day, and that's why they were different. It could be a Monday, a Wednesday. It did not coincide with the Good Fridays and the Sundays, Easter Sundays. They did not want to be like Christendom. Let's see. This year, I looked at it, the Nisan 14 falls on April 22nd. And I'm wondering, what? You know, we got looking at that because their invitation is for March 24th. That's, that's like a month out, a month and even a couple of days. Well, we had one of our viewers, one of the subscribers out there, thank you very much, that pointed us in this direction. Well, the Hebrew calendar is actually out, and there's a leap year. I didn't know that. Uh, here's what it says. Like all other lunisolar calendars, the Hebrew calendar consists of 20 of months, 29 or 30 days, which begin and end approximately the time the new moon. As 12 such months comprise a total of 354 days, an extra lunar month is added every two to three years so that the long-term average year length closely approximates the actual length of the solar year. So there's a lot of closenesses and approximate. So they, they tack on 29 days. If you went back 29 days that they tacked on this year, you'll get March 24th. It, it coincides. Um, so did they just do that and say, yeah, you know, you Jews, you can do what you want. We're going to go with the incorrect calendar and go back 29 days. Is that what they did? Well, I, I dug a little further into this. This is a big puzzle. I didn't realize this was a huge puzzle. Jesus Christ's Last Supper was on a Wednesday. This article saying, um, let's just cut to the chase, puzzle. While Matthew, Mark, and Luke say the Last Supper coincided with the start of the Jewish festival of the Passover, John claims it took place before. There's a puzzle here. So they're, they're digging into this. The Catholics say the evangelists and the critics generally agree the Last Supper was on a Thursday, that Christ suffered and died on a Friday, and that he arose from the dead on a Sunday. So some are saying, well, there had to be time for him to be arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. There had to be time for him to be trialed. You know, that, that trial that they put on with Pontius Pilate, there had to be time for all of that. That, that couldn't, all these things do not happen on one day, Jehovah's Witnesses. So they, they may have had this all wrong all, all along. Um, when we look further into this, uh, how did they calculate Nizan the 14th? Well, Jehovah's Witnesses do not want to get into um, lunar astrology. They stay away from astrology, but that's how they did it. They did not have anything but the moon. They used that. And they call it a uh, vernal system. <laughs> vernal system. Well, here it is. Uh, and I think this is the way to go. Because, folks, what if the internet goes down and we can't plug in when the Nizan 14 is? We're going to have to go with the moon and, and the equinox. That's how they calculated things back then. So here it is. As God commanded Moses, the first month of the year to you, was to be Nizan, which marked the vernal. Here it is, folks, the vernal equinox and the beginning of spring. So this is when the days are equal, same amount of sunshine, day and night. It just, it, there's an equilibrium. And it corresponds to March and April, just as the vernal equinox on March 25th was the beginning of a new year in a Roman calendar. Now, it's not always March 25th. It's not always like that. A lamb was to be kept until the 14th day of the same month. So as soon as there's that equaling, the same amount of days, and, and, and the moon will mark it as well, um, 
It, uh, it's marked uh, here, the first day of each month was determined by when a thin crescent of the new moon was observed in Jerusalem shortly after sunset, the full moon rising about two weeks later. So, yeah, 14 days later, the, two, the full moon rises. So here it is, uh, the first month of the year is when the days are equal and uh, corresponding to March, April. And the lamb was to be kept. So, so you see back then they had to keep a lamb, get it ready in celebration of the Passover of the lamb. And that was when uh, the angel came through Egypt and killed all the firstborn. And if you didn't have the, the lamb of the blood on your doorstep, you'd lose your firstborn. And uh, so a parallel to that is Jesus, of course. So a lamb was to be kept uh, according to that. And when at moonrise, the evening, the first full moon, it was to be eaten with the bread and the bitter herbs. And that was the beginning of the 15th day of the month. So it was the 14th day, the, the 14th of the equinox. That's how you figure it out. So when is the vernal equinox? March 19th. March 19th. So add 14 days to March 19th. And you get April 9th. April 9th should be the day. Is that right? March 19th. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. No. April 1st, April 2nd. It should be April 2nd. So, you see, I get different answers on YouTube. I wanted to show this to you. So then they say, well, the first day of spring is March 20th. And how is the month of Nizan determined? Well, Nizan's year begins the spring season. Technically, it's New Year's Day is the day after the new moon, closest to within 15 days before or after the spring equinox, when the day and the night is equal length, typically March 20th. In the Gregorian calendar, it begins the first month named Nisan, or Nisan, whatever. So, March 19th, I go a little further. That's the date. Um, the Last Supper of Jesus. Then they get into talking about, well, is it on a Wednesday? Is it a Thursday? Is it a Friday? Well, there's a new study, according to a new study, which claims to have solved the thorniest problem in the New Testament. If we use science and the Gospels hand in hand, we can prove there was no contradiction about the nature of the Last Supper. So it pulls up this article, this big long article. I'm not going to read it all. And it's the Last Supper of Jesus. When was it? The, the, the claim, I'll link it here if you want to read it. And I'm just going to read the ending. It says, in many ways, therefore, uh, Humphreys suggests that the Last Supper was a positioning exercise on Jesus' part, which gave him ample reason to use pre-exilic calendar. G and that means the moon, right? They use the moon calendar. So Jesus was identifying himself explicitly with Moses, he said, and he was setting himself up as a deliberate parallel. And, the, and this article says, then he died on Nizan 14th. So that's when he died, just as the Passover lambs were being slain according to the official Jewish calendar as well. These are deep, powerful symbolisms, and they can be based on objective historical evidence. So they're agreeing, Nizan 14, which would be April 2nd. Um, Holy Thursday, and I googled this, so according to the Catholics, commemorates the Last Supper. They're saying here is celebrated March 28th, 2024, according to the Catholic culture. So... You see, so Nizan 14, even though that could be April 1st, April 2nd, is not the day of the Passover celebration. It was before that. So I still couldn't get a clear answer at this point until I got to this article. I wanted to know, what are the Catholics doing today? You know, I, I even went on to Wikipedia. Did I show that article? I think I did, yes about how the Hebrews calendar is out every leap year it's out by and then they have to go back and fix it but how do you really know so if you go by the moon and you go by the vernal calendar the equinox when the days are equal 14 days later there's your Nizan 14 
That's your, see when the days are equal, that's the start of the new year, according to the way they did it back then. It wasn't January, it had to do with the equinox. So in the Catholic, uh, the dynamic Catholic here, and I'll link this, it's all about Holy Week. And a Catholic guide to Holy Week, Holy Week is the most significant week in Catholicism. You know, this is just like J.W. Org saying the Memorial of Christ is the most significant event for them for the whole year. The Catholics are saying the same thing. Spanning from Palm Sunday to Holy Saturday, it marks the final stretch before Easter Sunday, the celebration of Jesus' resurrection. During this sacred week, Catholics pray and reflect on the profound journey of Jesus' suffering, sacrifice, and victory over death. It starts on Palm Sunday, a day that commemorates Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. Remember when he rode in on the ass and they were throwing all the palm branches down? Palm Sunday. Holy Thursday celebrates the Last Supper and the institution of the Eucharist, while Good Friday reflects on Jesus' death by crucifixion. And throughout this week, Catholics reflect on the emotional intensity of Jesus' passion contemplate his boundless love and mercy, and anticipate the joyous hope of his resurrection. And an intentional Holy Week can serve as a spiritual pilgrimage that deepens our faith. So it sounds like quite a nice event. If this is supposed to be the most important event of the year, wouldn't it be nice to kind of know a little bit more about it? When that Last Supper took place, Jesus says, keep doing this in remembrance of me. It's not about his death. The day of his death was a few days later. When he rode in on that uh, donkey that night, they went into the upper chambers and they uh, commemorated the Last Supper. So it says, when is Holy Week of 2024? It says this year, Holy Week begins on, guess what? March 24th, 2024. March 24th, 2024. That's when it begins for the Catholics. And we see that Jehovah's Witnesses want the same clergy privilege when it comes to keeping records confidential, confessions confidential. Although, if you're a Catholic and you get a confession, you can never repeat the person's name. But if you're a Jehovah's Witness and you go to an elder with confession, a week later you could be disfellowshipped and your name is announced in the congregation and no one will ever talk to you again. You see... The two things, they work differently. The Jehovah's Witnesses want the protection of the privilege, but they don't want to do the action of the privilege and keep it, protect the people, not shun them, not disfellowship them. You see, it's not about disfellowshipping people when they have troubles. It's about helping them. So uh, what is Palm Sunday? This is when Jehovah's Witnesses are doing it. That's when their memorial is. It's not on Nizan 14. Palm Sunday is a week before Easter. It commemorates Jesus' triumph entry into Jerusalem. Catholics carry blessed palm branches into the church, symbolizing the crowd's welcoming gesture. The gospel readings recount the story of Jesus' death and passion, evoking reflection on his sacrificial love and the profound significance of Holy Week. You can reflect on this passage by reading the Gospels of Mark, Chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. <clears throat> and how to observe uh, Palm Sunday? Sunday Mass on Palm Sunday includes two readings from the Gospels. We hear about when Jesus entered Jerusalem at the start of Mass, and we read the entire Passion account during the liturgy of the Word. I don't know if I said that right. And a great way to start your holy work is by reflecting on Jesus' Passion. That's why I played the flicks at the beginning where Jesus was uh, turning over the money tables, you know, all the events where he's passionate, feeding people. He was very passionate. I think it's good to reflect on these things. Um, after attending Mass, it's common to display the palm branch he received at Mass. And some place it behind a crucifix. Some take several palm branches and weave them together to create a palm cross. And since, since palm branches are a blessed item, they should not be thrown in the trash. Didn't know all that about the palm branch. 
So it's interesting, some of this stuff. And I, I'm not Catholic. I don't proclaim any, any religion, but I do. I do believe in Jesus. And I do believe if you're going to be Christian and you want to take the emblem and the bread, uh, we're going to have another part here on how to make unleavened bread. And so if you want to partake uh, on, uh, on Palm Sunday when Jesus partook, it would be Palm Sunday. Uh, that's when they held in the upper room and they, and they had this meal. It wasn't the day he died. So this is interesting and you can do that yourself at home. So what is the Chrism Mass? What is Holy Thursday? How to observe Holy Thursday and a prayer for Holy Thursday? I'm not going to cover that, folks. My big thing I wanted to cover today is figure out this date. And finally, we nailed it. It's not the solar eclipse. It's, it's not Nizan 14. It has nothing to do with that. They went on Palm Sunday, which is really the proper way of doing it. I think it's the proper way of doing it. I think we've been doing it wrong all these years. Nizan 14. It's wrong. It's a Passover. Jesus did not. That's when he died. Is a few days later. So this has been an interesting week for me looking at this subject. I hope that uh, you guys uh, gleaned a little bit out of it as well. And uh, I hope it cleared a few questions up for you. But yeah, it's Palm Sunday. The palm branches. So if you get a palm branch, don't throw it away. It's holy. I write about the palm branch in my book, but that's <laughs> fictional. Um, interesting. Okay, well, until next time, keep living your day with love. And we'll see you tonight on Joe and France. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.